Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be doing some general plant maintenance so I thought I'd take you with me. Just some pruning, watering, checking for bugs, the usual. So I'm here in my kitchen at the moment. My caladium red flash is still looking really nice. Probably going to go dormant in the next month or so but I'll enjoy him for now. He's still putting out some new leaves which is nice. So beautiful. So let's see what we've got. I know my alocasia black velvet was looking a little bit rough. Not rough but needs a bit of a prune. Let me just grab my shears. So some of the older leaves need pruning off. Can see it's looking a bit kind of curly so I'm just going to trim off um, definitely this leaf and I'll have a look at the rest and then it can focus its energy on its newer leaves right excuse the shaky camera I'm holding it with one hand and pruning it with the other I'm using some sterilised pruning shears. This leaf's looking slightly kind of curly, but I think I'll leave that one for now. I think that will be okay. And I will give him a little bit of water. Excuse Marvin in the background screaming if you can hear him. Let me just grab my watering can. So I tend to water my plants little and often rather than giving them a really good soak and then leaving it for a bit longer. It's just the way I've always done it. So literally just giving him a little water. No fertilising now as it's coming into autumn. My croton is always thirsty, so I am going to give him a bit of a drink. Sorry, I can't really lean over in that corner for you to see properly. I'm trying not to catch my hand on this little devil here. I'm quite terrified of this cactus. It's an Opuntia cactus, or some people pronounce it Opuntia, I think, but I think it's Opuntia. Opuntia, I don't know. I'm going to give him a bit of a water. He looks slightly, slightly wrinkly. Barely, actually, but that will usually indicate it needs a bit of a water. I've had him for about a year now. Let me just put my watering can down and I'm just going to show you my vanilla planifolia which is a vanilla orchid. It has actually attached itself to the wall and it's as high as the ceiling now. It's absolutely huge. I did hear that these can be a bit tricky to grow so I'm really surprised how well it's doing. Maybe it's because it's been summer and it hasn't gone through a winter here yet. Let's see how it gets on in the UK winter because it's going to be a bit cooler in this windowsill. And they do like a hot and humid environment, so we'll see. I'm just going to stick my finger in the soil and see if it's dry or moist. Mm. Feels a bit dry, so I'm going to give him a water. Again, just a little bit of water. I am an underwaterer, <laughs> a serial underwaterer, which I think is better than being an overwaterer, to be honest. Because you can kind of tell when the plants need a drink, they'll kind of droop or 
it'll be looking a little bit sad and a bit of water will perk them up whereas if you overwater you can end up with root rot and all sorts this is my pink princess beautiful it's a new leaf oh let me move it over here it's a bit hard doing this with one hand Let's zoom in so there's a lovely bit of pink variegation here I keep moving this plant around the house, trying to give it as bright a light as possible, but not direct sun. So if there is a bit of direct sun coming in, I'll move it off the window. So here's the new leaf. I don't think there's any pink on it. There's like a speck there, but I don't know if that's variegation or just a blemish, but there does appear to be another new leaf coming through and it does look a bit kind of pinker in colour so I'm hoping that that's going to have some nice variegation. Again I'm just going to give this a little water. Oops. There's only a small root system on this plant so I'm not going to give it too much water at all. Right, let's put this one back on the window. Just wanted to show you my Alocasia Amazonica. This particular alocasia didn't go dormant in the winter, so it kept this leaf here, and there was another leaf that I cut off because that was looking a little bit sad, but this big leaf at the back here is a new leaf from this summer. It's only produced one new leaf this summer, so not amazing, but it looks healthy, and it'll be interesting to see whether it goes dormant this winter or whether it sticks around again. Here we have my Nelly Isler, Isler orchid and when I first got it it did have a bloom spike which died back and then it actually produced another spike with some more flowers so um, but they've just started to die off so I'm going to cut this off. This will be fun doing this with one hand. So I'm just going to cut it just there. I've heard these can be really tricky as well, so it'll be interesting to see how it does over the winter. Here we have some, oh, get rid of that. Here we have some plants that I propagated quite a few months ago. I did make a video on it, which I can link below for you. And I'll just show you how they are looking. To be fair, they should be planted up by now, but I've just been lazy and left them in the water. So they've got really good root systems. The Syngonium and the um, Pothos were the first to root. So look at the roots on this bad boy. These love water. And same with this one. This is a marble queen. It's got some really good roots. Definitely time for planting up. Some really nice variegation on the new leaf. And then we've just got my Begonia Maculata YTI cuttings. Let's have a look. Ooh. Um, okay, one of them appears to have a really good root system and the other one not quite so much, but they both look nice and healthy. Actually, the one that doesn't have the good root system has grown a new leaf, which is interesting. And then I've just got some Petonia cuttings in there. And String of Hearts. Uh, this little guy, this is a 
Dwarf Cavendish um, cutting, not cutting, um, I propagated it. So my larger one had some pups and actually now this one has got some pups. I'm gonna give that a water because they like moist soil. Again, just a small amount. And now it's coming into autumn, I am gonna be cutting back on the watering. How much you water your plants will depend on your home environment, how warm it is, where you live, lots of things to kind of take into consideration. I like to keep my house quite warm, but it does get a bit cool in this window during the winter, but all the plants that I keep on this window always seem to be really, really happy. Like the croton has never dropped a leaf. I actually pruned the leaves off the stem there because it was just getting too big, but it's never dropped a leaf from having a tantrum about temperature change or anything like that. I'm going to give this beautiful caladium a little bit of water. You'll find that if they are thirsty, they will start to droop. Um, it was getting a bit wild, so I have tied it together there in the middle. <laughs> right, let me get in here. This caladium has flowered twice for me this summer which is awesome. And I didn't do anything with the flowers, I just let them die back and I think one of them's kind of there on the soil. I think you can take the seeds from them and create new plants, I might look into that. And then at the back we've just got my beautiful variegated monstera which has been battling thrips for months. I will get that down later and have a proper look to see if there's any bugs still on it. Blooming nightmare these thrips. And then my agronema, I'm going to give that a bit of a water. Just a little bit. So I did water my variegated monstera this morning because it was looking slightly droopy so I'm not going to water him again. Um, oh, the anthurium actually, I might give him a water. All this weird stuff that you can see on the soil, that is thrip treatment. So that is predatory mites. Um, that's the substrate that the mites come with. I guess it's just like debris so they can kind of cling on to something in the tube. So you kind of sprinkle that on the soil and on the leaves of the plant. And then the mites kind of distribute around the plant and they're meant to kind of eat the thrip eggs. I think they have helped, but it is very difficult to get rid of thrips because they can hop from one plant to another or they can hop kind of onto something in say in the kitchen you know onto the surface or whatever and then hop back onto the plant so yeah they've been a real nightmare but I think I'm slowly getting there. So I'm here in my living room now. I'm not going to go around all my plants with you because that will take way too long. I'm going to be pruning a couple of calatheas in here. This particular one did have thrips. So I'm just gonna have a look and see if I can see any on here. The reason why the leaves look a little bit kind of glossy, shiny, is because I treated the plant for the thrips with my neem oil mix, which I'll link in the description box for you. Actually, it does give quite a nice kind of finish to the leaves, makes them look nice and shiny. So I can't see any, but I bet there are a few in there somewhere, the little buggers. As I said, they're really hard to get rid of. But again, I've treated this plant now with the predatory mites. So I'm hoping that they are helping. 
and I'm just going to prune off any dead leaves so I can see a, a small crispy one in here. Some people won't bother kind of pruning off everything but I'm quite OCD with my plants if there's any yellow leaves or old leaves. That, see this could just be an old leaf or this could be a leaf that's been damaged by thrips because the leaves do turn yellow if it's been eaten alive by thrips basically. Let's get rid of that. Out of interest I'm just going to look at the back of the leaf to see if I can see any on there. Mm. Oh, I can't see any. Oh there's another crispy one there. Let's get rid of that. As I said before, I'm not fertilizing my plants now. I was during the summer every kind of, mm, every month or so um, with Baby Bio. I've used this for probably about six or seven years. You just put a few drops into the watering can and it seems to keep the plants happy. So at the moment, the humidity in my living room is 52% and it's 24 degrees Celsius. Let's have a look at this one. I'm sure I saw a yellow leaf on this one somewhere. Again, this one was attacked by thrips. can't see any on there but I will link below for you the video I made on thrips because I show you in the video what to look out for this is classic thrip damage here yellowing and brown patches on the undersides of the leaves you can see the oh look you can see one Ugh. Right, let's zoom in there. Can you see it? That little tiny, oh, oh God, hang on, there. I'm squishing him, yuck. So yep, this poor plant still has thrips. So I will put some more predatory mites into the pot and hope that they get rid of them. They're not as bad as what they were. Some of the plants had loads of them. I'll cut that yellow leaf off later. I don't want to spend too much time. You may be wondering why you haven't seen my glorious Orbifolia for quite some time and that is because it was really badly attacked by thrips and I basically had to cut the whole plant right down to soil level. So there was literally no leaves. So all these leaves are brand new leaves over the last maybe like six weeks. I'll insert some photos of how damaged the leaves were from the thrips. Sometimes I think like it's a thrip like this, but it's actually just like a bit of dust or something. Oh my God, it is a thrip. Ah, oh my God. Okay, so my poor Orbifolia is not completely free of thrips yet, which is very depressing but I'll be on that later. Just like with my other plants, I will add some more predatory mites to the soil. Oh, what a shame. I mean, all these leaves are coming through really lovely. 
you'll be able to tell when the thrips have kind of damaged your plant because you'll have these horrible brown patches underneath and it'll start yellowing there's still some new leaves coming through look I'm actually going to give my orbifolia a water I can't believe that those thrips are the worst bugs I have ever had to deal with. I have successfully gotten rid of mealy bugs and spider mites, fungus gnats, but the thrips are very hard to get rid of and they are driving me mad. So if anyone else has got any tips, please let me know in the comments. I did hear someone mention about the beneficial nematodes before, but the only thing is with those are you have to keep the soil really kind of wet for a couple of weeks and obviously some plants don't like soggy soil, so that's the only thing with those. I did actually use those in the garden to help kind of get rid of the slugs. So let's just give Orby a little water. Again, I just water little. tend to kind of target the water around the base of the plant and as I've mentioned before I only use filtered water on all of my house plants because some of them can be a bit fussy with tap water and I never have an issue with like browning or crispy tips or anything as you can see even though the humidity in here is only 50 they still never get crispy tips well, unless they get bugs. So what I'm going to do with my Orbifolia is literally just wipe down the leaves with some damp kitchen roll and then just apply some more predatory mites into the soil. Damp bugs. Okay, this is going to be the last plant that I'm going to be watering today. Otherwise this video is going to go on for hours. <laughs> my lovely Maranta. Again, there was some thrips on this guy. I don't know if there still is. I hope not. I can't see any. So I'm just going to give him a little water. So I hope you've enjoyed <laughs> me going around and pruning and watering my plants. I hope you found it useful in some way. I do actually get asked quite a lot how much I water my plants and things like that. So I thought I would take you along with me. Ooh, look at this beautiful Calathea network. So pretty. Again, the thrips were on this one, but it seems to be all right at the moment. the battle goes on. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions just leave them below and I will see you all soon. Take care everyone, bye! I forgot about this beauty, I've been saving this one to prune with you guys um, and I wanted to show you the new leaf because it is so stunning. Look at that! This is a Syngonium Pink Splash. When the leaves first come out, they are really bright pink. And then over time, they kind of dull down to this lovely dusky pink. So pretty. And there was an old leaf here that I wanted to prune. So let's get rid of it. Beautiful. No thrips on this guy. My office has been thrip free for quite some time now, thank goodness. So that's it. I really am going now. Goodbye everyone and happy pruning.